So in my presentation, I, I, I mentioned something about the information systems research workshop that we had in Negambo. So while I'm talking about uh, synergies between health and education, that was one of our attempts to see like within the DHIS2 and the HISP community, we can have uh, interactions, synergies between research domains. So that's why we wanted to have not only the uh, uh, health ministry, but also the education ministry attended. But however, given that uh, education sector is a bit new uh, in the DHIS2 domain, and also when it comes to our tradition of conducting information systems research, uh, the, especially the health field, they were quite mature. So it was a bit of a challenge, at least that's what I felt when I, when I invited the Ministry of Education to join that workshop, right? But uh, I also felt a bit uh, not so nice uh, for that uh, invitation all of a sudden, asking uh, them to join uh, an event which is uh, participated by the Health Ministry who had a really long tradition of conducting research in health, uh, especially in health informatics, and uh, which was also attended uh, heavily by all the experts in the HISP network all around the world. But uh, they accepted our invitation and they attended that workshop together with the health ministry. So what, I, what we are trying to do next is to get some reflections from the Ministry of Education in Sri Lanka who joined that I, I information systems research fundamentals workshop and, and kind of explore a bit more on whether it was kind of uh, one-off workshop which they did not understand anything, whether it was too much, or was there anything useful at all for them and something that they can share with you all so you can also use it and consider. And even like if it is something very useful, we all can try to uh, design similar workshops which you can conduct subnationally. So to discuss more about it, let me invite Asanka Atukorala, who's a, a Assistant Director ICT in Data Management Unit of uh, Ministry of Education, Sri Lanka. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, attending to a, a workshop on information system research uh, is sound like a fantastic opportunity to uh, di uh, dive deep into the latest developments and uh, research trends in the field of information systems. So as the Minister of Education, Few of our officials got that opportunity to participate uh, to a workshop which was conducted in March 2024 at the Nigambo, Sri Lanka. Uh, the five days workshop was organized by University of Oslo, uh, mainly for the Ministry of Health officials from countries like India, Pakistan, Rwanda, Malawi, uh, Bangladesh, Vietnam, and Sri Lanka like that. A uh, few days prior to the workshop, uh, our MOE official received an invitation to the participation for the workshop, and four of our officials participated uh, for the Information System Research Fundamentals workshop. The main objective uh, of uh, the workshop was strengthen a research capacity with his network along with, uh, followed by uh, three uh, objectives like enhancing research implementation capacity, uh, establish a common language for conducting action research, also the revive the roots of his approach by studying routine data improvement. Uh, at a glance, uh, the workshop facilitators theoretically conducted their speeches on uh, what is the information uh, system thinking and also the fundamentals of information system research, how to design the research, what are the various research methods, uh, how we differentiate qualitative versus uh, quantitative research, 
Also, the uh, role of research objective and the research questions. Uh, what is the action, re action research and the characteristics of the action research? Uh, also, the, describe some models of action research uh, in information systems related, and the primary and secondary data collection approaches. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, participants from Ministry of Health uh, and the HISP network uh, in all those mentioned countries carried out uh, research group work prior to the workshop. Uh, then they presented their findings uh, of their data collection tasks. From those presentations, we saw they, may fa may they, they face many challenges and also they had some strengths for, for their tasks. Uh, from those presentations, uh, these are the highlighted areas. Uh, when new staff members join into a research project, they may face challenges in adopting existing workflows, uh, procedures, and data collection methodologies. This gap between old and new staff uh, members can disrupt the continuity of data collection. An analysis process requiring additional training and support uh, to bridge the knowledge gap, uh, ensuring smooth flow of the research. Also, the data collection in research project can be delayed by various challenges, uh, such as limited access to research participants, uh, difficulty in obtaining accurate data due to cultural and language barriers, and some logistical constraints. Uh, in many research settings, uh, accessing reliable internet connectivity can be a major obstacle, uh, in particular in remote or rural areas. The while offline systems may uh, so, so, so the temporary solution uh, for the uh, internet connectivity issues, uh, they often more time and uh, effort to data synchronization, uh, management, and the troubleshooting. So by participating in this research workshop offers us uh, valuable insights and learnings uh, that uh, can significantly enhance research capabilities of us uh, and there, there are some key takeaways from the workshop. Firstly, the workshop open exposes us to a variety of research approaches and methodologies in the field of information systems. Uh, this, expo ex this exposure uh, allows us to extend our uh, prospective and consider alternative methods for the investigating research questions. Then secondly, uh, it provides a platform for us to develop uh, our understanding of research design and methodologies specific to the information systems. Though uh, interactive sessions, discussions, and practical exercises we gain hands-on experience in designing research studies, selecting appropriate methods, and uh, implementing data collection and uh, analysis techniques. Then one of the most valuable aspect of the attending uh, research workshop is the opportunity to network with peers, uh, and also establish researchers and academies in the field of information systems. Uh, engaging the discussions, sharing insights, uh, and exchanging uh, ideas with uh, fellow participants uh, and facilitators, uh, collaborative learning and open doors to potential collaborations, uh, knowledge sharing, and uh, uh, professional development opportunities. Uh, fourthly, uh, the facilitators mentioned some specific research resources uh, to follow up them in our, after the workshop. Reading those materials can expand our understanding on discussed topics. Uh, reflective exercises conducted during the workshop encourage us to uh, critically evaluate our own research practices and assumptions. Then staying connected with workshop facilitators and fellow participants through online forums, uh, social media platforms, and professional network posters a uh, sense of community and enables ongoing collaboration, uh, knowledge exchange, and the support. Perhaps the most uh, significant outcome of attending this IS research workshop is 
the motivation and the inspiration uh, to embark on our own research uh, journeys. And finally, the Ministry of Education, Sri Lanka, uh, need to improve our researches related to information system in different ways. For that, the identified tasks are uh, taking good initiatives to develop a research culture across the different levels at the MOI, like uh, the ministry, provincial, and the zonal level. Also, the developed capacity of uh, research conducting throughout the MOI with support of uh, research and development branch of the MOI. Uh, then the identify gaps and developing research areas. Then we can conduct researches which are related to information systems at the MOI staff. Also motivating MOI staff to publish their own findings. And finally, we can add information system uh, as the area of MOI research symposium. Then, uh, before I conclude my presentation, I extend my sincere gratitude to His Sri Lanka and the University of Oslo for their invaluable support in cultivating our skills and capacities. We deeply appreciate your partnership and commitment to our development. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much, Asanka, for sharing those insights. Um, what, I mean, what is really valuable is to see like how much of uh, what we discussed in that research workshop you can implement moving forward. In fact, uh, I mean, one other thing which I can recommend the ministry to do is uh, you, you already have implemented something, right? So in that workshop, we discussed about identifying the problem and based on that, the research question. Like, and and uh, one other thing that, that to, just to complement what she mentioned, uh, when we talk about research, for most of us, what comes to our mind is collecting some numerical data and conducting a statistical analysis and getting some outputs, okay? But the research that we kind of focused in that session was more about the action research. It is about you implement something. We learn the experience, we interview people, we observe. We document that. So kind of like more, more into the qualitative aspect of it, but you can of course do mixed methods and there are so many different ways of doing that. But I really encourage all of you uh, to go on conducting those research. Okay. I think I, I need to, uh, there is one question I was expecting to ask from you, right? At the end of my presentation. So before we move to the next presenter, I want to ask that question. So shall I repeat the question or you already remember? Already remember. So what was the question? Louder. It was about trainings, right? You sure it was not about uh, training? No, it was about capacity building, correct, yes. So what I asked was, please share with me one experience of building capacity in digital technologies. So do you have any, any similar experience in any of the country implementations that you have? Yes? No? Yeah? Okay. So I, I see a yes here, so please. Okay. Uh, okay, I am Saumya from Ministry of Education. And uh, in Ministry of Education and all the provincial departments of education, we all face a problem. Uh, uh, regarding human resource to collect data from school level, divisional level, zonal level, and provincial level, and basically the national level for the Ministry of Education. So uh, we try to appoint a focal point, a person from each and every level to gather data uh, from each and every level. So uh, basically we try to uh, appoint a person from each level, but uh, Yes, there are some kind of uh, issues. So we nominated a person from uh, existing staff in schools, divisions, zonal, uh, zones, and provinces. So uh, we call them data officers. So we uh, 
have to have uh, sessions for them to build up their capacity related to the uh, basic items because some of them are not having any kind of uh, training or uh, knowledge, basic knowledge related to the I, uh, IT usage. So some of them are uh, qualified masters, they qualified some uh, uh, related to the IT uh, subject. They have so many qualifications. So, but we target the per people who don't have, who didn't have a kind of uh, IT, basic IT knowledge. So we prepared online learning management system to build up their capacity, including basic uh, information system uh, 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 modules such as uh, introduction to IT, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and internet and email, and remote access, such kind of seven modules are there. And we prepared short uh, videos to teach them uh, and included those to the learning management system. And we asked them to uh, follow up those videos. And finally, we uh, gave the assessment. Each, for each and uh, every module, we prepared MCQ assessments. Uh, so they have to face the assessment and they have to uh, earn fi uh, minimum 50, of, uh, uh, 50 marks from each and every module and they get, finally they get a certificate signed by the secretary to the Ministry of Education. So it, is, it was valid and uh, the progress is uh, these are the pioneers, uh, provincial level uh, officials are the people who uh, did their best to promote this and uh, uh, we are happy to say that more than 50% of data officers, a number of data officers, it is uh, more than 11,000 all over the island. We have school data officers, more than 11,000. Uh, divisional, uh, zonal, and provincial data officers are also there. So uh, nearly 12,000 data officers are there. So uh, more than 50% of them earn the e-certificate, and more than 30% of the data officers are doing ongoing uh, in the process. And uh, yes, uh, we did something <laughs> incredible <laughs> related to the capacity building, related to the data officers. Thank you so much. Wow, that's, that's a fantastic uh, example of a kind of, uh, uh, I mean, it's actually the fantastic example for the question I asked, right? It was more about building capacity and having a learning management system benefits not only just one uh, particular system implementation, but it is really helping to build the core informatics and ICT capacity. And to kind of uh, know that uh, you have 50% uh, of the staff, so you have more than 10,000 schools in the country, right? And out of that, you have 11 to 12,000 of uh, data officers, and out of that, 50% have completed this course. I think it's a great achievement. And in fact, uh, we can even consider uh, having this presented, maybe in the next uh, conference, we can definitely consider, yeah. Right, thank you so much. Uh, but, but I want to hear from other groups as well, so let's see uh, maybe some other time.